Hey everybody, Tony from Shooting Star SVG back and today we're going to talk about how to create a wavy-ish retro e design in Inkscape with an offset and wonky letters. That's the best way I can describe it. Somebody in the Facebook group asked, how in the world do I do this? I'm going to walk you through it in Inkscape. I'm also going to post a second video of doing this in Affinity Designer because I feel like it's going to be helpful. It's a pretty straightforward process and it should give you the end result. I'm not going to go and do the whole full-blown design that's shown in this particular image. It'll give you the backbone that you need. So with that being said, I'm going to head over to my computer screen and we'll get started. So in the Facebook group, we had somebody post, how in the world do I do this? It looks like a retro type font that they have kind of molded around certain letters and also have offsets going through. And they said, hey, I want people to be, I want this to be transparent. I don't want this here to be like a white outline. Offset is your friend. Offset is your friend. So what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna go to my fonts. I think the best one I can use for this is keep on trucking. Let's see if I have it. All right, so we're gonna start. Now their O's are clearly little happy faces. So if we'll, we'll start there, we'll start with this little piece there. So to do that, you're gonna go to path, object path, okay? Object, ungroup. You're gonna select both of these little O's, all right? And then you're gonna go to path, break apart. We'll do just one at a time. So you're going to select the O and then you're gonna go to path union, all right? And that's gonna make it a solid shape. So when I double click on that, I just have the O um, and then you can superimpose your smiley face over that. So again, select it and go to path union. And that's gonna make one shape. I will say one thing that I did differently after I added these little happy faces is I just grouped the good together. So that way I can go to object, ungroup. And the reason why is because in this particular image, it looks like these are kind of moved in, I don't know, a little cattywampus of a uh, direction. So again, I'm just gonna go ahead and group those together, okay? So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move all these words kind of close together. So it looks like it's is actually pretty straight. This S might be a little bit off kilter. I know that this apostrophe is not, and the A is kind of short up. Good, we'll start about right here. And I'm just gonna change the colors of these in between one another, so that way you can see what I'm doing here. So this is how I would kind of start. I would just lay it out and be like, all right, this is what I'm working with. And I would basically start top down. So first of all, we already converted this over to a path. So you're gonna to wanna to select all the rest of these and go path, object to path, okay? Now you can go um, to object on group and then path union. On the ones where it looks like the letters have moved around quite a bit, you may wanna wait but we're gonna use envelope deformation to get these other letters where we want them to be. This one, obviously you don't have to do that with. With day, again, we'll go to ungroup and we're just gonna to go to path union. These are gonna to stay together. I guess I'm gonna take myself back on that one and I'm going to go to object, ungroup, path union. Again here, ungroup. Okay, so again, starting at the top, what we wanna do for this one is we're just gonna bend the bottom of this A up. So you're going to go to path, path effects. And since this is already converted to a path, what you will do is there's a little plus button right here. And hope, and you can't see it because my webcam's in the way. So let me remove that. Okay, so now you will see there is a little teeny tiny plus button right here, okay? So you're gonna to wanna to click on this. We're going to try to find lattice deformation. So I have this in my favorites currently, but you can use this search bar and type in lattice deformation and click on that. And what that will do is it will give you a grid. So we can zoom in here so you can see this a little bit better. Um, and you can change the grid to reset, you can reset the grid. Um, if you go down, you can set the default parameters so that way you can get more or less points here um, and you can actually change those around. I'm not going to go into the nitty gritty of all of that right now, but if you go into my Inkscape class, you'll be able to check that out. So 
if you were just to drag this around without holding anything down, um, it's going to kind of go over the place. But if you hold down the control key, you'll have a little bit more functionality where it's going to snap for you. So I'm actually going to bring this point up. And I'm going to bring this point up and see where that gets me. So this is kind of close ish, not exactly where I'm going for because that A is pretty flat on the bottom. So what I'm going to also do is bring this point up. And I'm just going to play around with it until I get about what I'm looking for. I'm going to bring this one down a little bit more. Oh, I grabbed the wrong one. This one down. I'm going to pull this back to where it was. And I'm going to pull this down a little bit. And then I'm going to actually pull this down a little bit. So what you're going to do is you're just going to mess around with that A until you get it to about where you want it to be. And then you're going to go to path, object to path. And while it's not completely perfect, I can now bring this good and add a path effect also of lattice deformation. And I can start maneuvering this one around. And basically what I'm going to do here is I'm going to bring this D up. Like this. And so this is a little bit of a work in progress if you're going for that wavy look. And I did not want to grab that particular node there. I'm looking for here. I'm going to bring this down just a smidge. And I'm going to bring this guy up a little bit. And I'm going to bring these guys up a bit. Bring this down a little bit. And I'm going to bring this up just a hair. And then I'm going to go to path, object to path. We'll see if that's good. I mean, obviously, that's really, really close. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to bring this guy down. And I'm going to bring this A down. And it's not really exact as far as what that particular image was, but you'll see as we get to some more of these wonkier ones what it will look like. So on this case, the little, oh, the little, okay, don't worry about that. That little happy face disappeared there. So what we're going to do here, I'm going to bring this up just a little bit. You can do this in two ways. You can do an outset or you can do a dynamic offset and this will create another um, offset for you. So what you would do for this is you're going to duplicate it. To duplicate it, you're going to hit control D on your keyboard. Okay. Or you can go to edit, duplicate. Again, see here, control G for that. I'm going to change the color of that so y'all can see. Okay. And then what you're going to do is you can hit control close parentheses or the zero on your keyboard and that's going to start offsetting this. Okay. All right. Now, if you were to bring this all the way back, you can see that there's an offset around the back of your words. Bring that back up to the top. Now for this part, if you're taking the offset away from both of these, you're going to want to combine these into one union. So you're going to select them both and go to union, unionize the text, select the offset, select the text, go to path difference. Okay. Now you have that offset look. Okay. Like this. Pretty simple. All right. So those two are done. We're going to make those both black. We're going to go ahead and go to, I don't want to unionize them because it looks like you want them different colors. So that's totally fine. We'll just leave this one like this. All right. Now the day is a little bit more messy here. And to bring this guy up to about there. And what you'll do, and I'm not, just for sake of time, I'm probably not going to end up doing the teach. And that's okay, because again, this is a process that you're going to want to play with. It looks like this is pretty down and up. All right. So again, this is a path. You'll go to path, um, path effects, 
which I already have open here, go to the little plus button and lattice deformation. Okay. You're going to go ahead and edit your notes. You'll see that there. Down. 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 Up. Up. Down, down, pull that a little bit more up, pull that a little bit more up. And then I'm gonna pull this down, I'm gonna pull this down. And then path, object to path. So again, not as crazy as this particular day, but what we will do is we're going to move this guy over to about here. You make it a smidge smaller and up. And again, you're going to want to hit Control D on your keyboard to duplicate. I'm going to change the color of that top layer just to show you. Okay. See, I have two. And then you're going to hit Control Zero. And you're going to see that start to offset. Similarly, if you don't want to do that, you can just go to path, outset. So again, control, close parentheses. And then you would just subtract it from there. I'm also going to show you on the um, dynamic offset. So I'm going to delete that. Again, you're going to hit control D to duplicate, change the color so you can see what that looks like. Okay. And then you can go to path, dynamic offset. What you're going to see here on the dynamic offset is this little node here. And as you pull out, it's going to make the offset. OK, you can actually do an inset as well on that, but you can do the offset that way. All right. Instead of using the control um, zero on your keyboard. And then you would just go to path object to path. You're good there again, moving that away from the other layer. OK, and then you would just select that. You would select your good text and go to path difference. And you can see that cut out right there. You can go ahead and change this color to something a little bit different. And you would just go through and follow that process as you go through with each of the letters. So again, it takes some time. It is a very tedious design if you're going through and doing all those retro type waves, but you get the idea. You can go through, create the waves, add the offset, subtract it from the text, and you will get that separation, okay? The reason why you know this works is because if I was to create a background behind this, okay, and just send it to the back, you can see all those black spots on the in-between. So if it was on a t-shirt, all of these areas would not be white. They would in fact be whatever that shirt color is. So if I was to change the color to purple or a lilac or a pink or this dark magenta or whatever it is, some of these are really like, crazy um you would be able to see it so hopefully that helps it's pretty straightforward not a really difficult tutorial in inkscape i'll try to run through the same thing in affinity designer if that's something people want please comment below and i'll do affinity designer probably tomorrow because it's already 9 30 and i'm pretty tired i have to drive to work tomorrow but i will take care of that for y'all so you have any questions on how to process this please let me know in the comments box below or head on over to the facebook group and we can chat about it there if there's anything else y'all are looking for let me know and i will catch y'all on the next video shooting star svg signing out mm -hmm.